Earnings seasons are here. Several companies have reeled out their full year 2019 financials. Joining me in the studio to look at the company's earnings, Nestle, MTN, is Jenny, Jerry Mwebe, analyst uh, from Cardinal Stone. Jerry, you are welcome, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your business me. report. So um, let's just start with, uh, with MTN now. I think we're also going to look at uh, Nestle in a sec. But also, I badly want to talk about what happened in the stock market on, on Friday. But um, let's talk about, uh, about MTN, starting with them. Um, how, how do you see their, uh, their performance with regards to the uh, 2019 uh, financial year performance? I think that was really, really a very good result for MTN. I mean, we see service revenue grow about 0.6%. Mm. Um, that was even more than what we expected for MTN. Um, EBITDA was also high, about 45% as well. Profits about 30% mm. high. I mean, MTN really posted a very good result. Notably, if you look at the Q4 performance, Q4 was good. MTN was expecting you know, to grow at about 12%, but they did about 14% in Q4. We're seeing a lot of those growth come from you know, the voice segment. Of course, voice has uh -huh. been a big thing for MTN. Okay. And then there's also the data segment. And we're seeing a lot of subscri um, subscriber growth, and um, that has really been positive. Okay, yeah. and the, they are expected to maintain their, their top, top, top position with regards to market share. Is that right? Yeah, MTN is a top player in the telecom space in Nigeria as far as you know, voice and data is concerned. And mm. of course, we're also talking about the fintech space, so which they want to play in. Mm. Um, and, and that's very key. If you look at um, since July of last year, we've been seeing a lot of growth in subscriber base. You know, in Nigeria, subscribers growing about 2 million um, subscribers on a monthly basis, mm. and MTN has been a major contributor to that particular growth. Okay, okay. Now, I, I was going to ask so it's still vo voice calls and uh, data, data purchases. Those are still the main areas. Yeah, so those are two very big ones. I mean, voice, like I said, contributes about 72%. Um, but data is, is where the focus needs to be right now, because if you look at um, of the overall subscriber base that MTN has, you just have about 25 million subscribers mm. which, who are active in the data space. That's about 39%. So you can see the scope, you know, in terms of conversion, you know, that's available, potential conversion that's available. So the scope is really, really big for, for MTN, you know, to convert most of those guys that are strong in voice, you know, into the data space. And of course, like I said before, the fintech is also something that um, MTN is looking at growing strongly. Yeah. Um, you know, they recently talked about expanding um, the, the, the bouquet of products that they're going to offer following the acquisition of the super agent license. Um, beyond just cash, um, trans beyond just transfers, you know, and then top ups, you're starting cash trans um, deposits, cash withdrawals, and, you know, a lot of other stuff as well. Mm. As well. And see, look, yeah, I, I have to ask you, with regards to the financial inclusion drive of the central bank, right, uh, there was an 80% target mm -hmm. for 2020. We're not, we're, not, we're not getting there. <laughs> it's been pushed now, I believe, to 2020, 2023, 2024, a 95% target. Um, this, primarily, it is believed that financial inclusion can be achieved with the telcos. Yeah. yeah? And so that's why I think the super agent license and uh, the, um, the PSBs as well. We're still waiting on that as far as clarity with regards to where that can go. But what, what are your thoughts as far as them being the drivers of getting more people in rural areas and elsewhere as far as financial inclusion is concerned? I think that is, financial inclusion is the, the overall essence of what the CBN is trying to do in this mm. particular regard, right? Now, the, the CBN understands that banks traditionally would not be able to do this because if you look at about time, banks have been very traditional in their approach. Right. What we're beginning to see right now is an era of disruption in banking um, offerings, so, and that disruption has come to stay. The most you would see is banks evolve and adjust to the emergence of telcos being major players in the financial space. And there are certain areas, if you look at the rural areas, like you mentioned, the essence of financial inclusion is to get to those targeted areas which banks have hitherto not been able to penetrate, maybe due to high costs you know, of operating those particular areas, whereas the telcos, because of the technology that they have, more or less like a, like a virtual banking system of some sort, so the telcos, you know, it's a bit cheaper for them to get to those particular areas, and that is what financial inclusion is all about. Um, yes, and so it has come to stay, we would see telcos be a major driver for it, and um, I think the you know the progress that is being made currently is already sending some chill down the spine of most banks. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. By the way, revenue of uh, over a trillion. Ha! Eh? Yes, I think only Zenith, uh, uh, besides profit for the period, uh, the two hundred billion. billion. It's only Zenith that so far we've seen. I think of the of the publicly listed company. I know that's a bank, though. Oh. Just I, I should make that very clear for our viewers, mm -hmm. though. But that's two hundred billion mark. Eh? It's only those two two that that have that have crossed it. Competition for them with regards to the other players is only few, uh, but do you think they're 
they're going to maintain this as far as their, their top line uh, position with regards to market share. Do you see any any of the other players pushing them? I know Airtel is also publicly listed, but how, how do you see the space with the other players? I think um, overall telecom you know, companies will continue to push, but then um, it's clear in, in a lot of ways that MTN is, is a leader. Um, they are, they, in the whole of West Africa, MTN is the first telecom company to, to successfully test you know, 5G capabilities. Right. And that comes from the test you know, of the 4G plus that they have done. Um, you know, last year, they rolled out over 6,000 new sites you know, for um, 4G penetration. They're increasing the 4G coverage you know, across um, you know, its new cities last year. So they are doing a lot to, to maintain a dominance in that particular space. And I think um, yeah, you know, there's still lots of potential there. Jerry, we could <laughs> remain here for the rest of the segment. Eh? There's, so you've mentioned 5G. The, the technology. This, this is where the innovation is. This is where we need to go. But let's let's move to uh, uh, Nestle now. We're going to move to the, the, the food segment and let's look at their uh, performance uh, for the fiscal year 2019. How, how are you seeing things as far as uh, Nestle is concerned? I think it's a very fantastic result from Nestle, in our opinion. I mean, you, you, this is coming an era where you see. Um, consumer disposable income is weak in Nigeria. Yes. It's talking about um, demand issues and all of that. Yet, Nestle is posting this kind of result. And that speaks a lot to the brand loyalty. It speaks a lot to the depth of their market penetration strategies. It speaks a lot to um, the, the product innovation that they, they, they've brought to the table, also to be able to attend to customer needs. Mm, mm, mm. And what we see, this is the thing, with regards to what you've just mentioned now, as far as uh, customer disposable income uh, being, being squeezed, how do you see things, I mean, as far as the sector is concerned, it looks like the challenges are there. How, how do you see them being able to navigate this and then for the other players in the, in, in the sector? So, so Nestle is more about food. So you have, you have two major segments. You have the food and the beverages segment. And people, no matter how bad the economy is, people, people have to consume. eat. Yes, you have to eat. You know, you have to get all of all this. And that's what is, is good for them. Um, a stronger part of their growth is actually coming from the north. Okay. Um, yes, so there's a lot of brand loyalty for Nestle coming from the north. Mm. Lots of... Um, innovative strategies in when it comes to logistics and distribution, because if you look at the consumer space in Nigeria, logistics has been a major concern or a major constraint. I mean, that's from tied the, to infrastructure. Yes, of course, ah. tied to infrastructure and all that. But Nestle has been able to come up with ways, strategies to evolve, you know, around the distribution challenges. You know, they have um, these kind of trucks that can go, go into um, deeper areas, rural areas that your typical big trucks, of course, would not be will not be able to go to speaking mm. to some of, some of the distributors and that Nestle have in their books. So these are some of the innovations, you know, like I said, the road to market strategies that Nestle have put into place. That does not mean that there are no potential challenges because uh -huh. the closure of the borders of, you know, definitely means that you begin to see some, you know, small players, you know, come up with products and all that are you know, cheaper, you know, to the consumer. And then um, that may pose some challenges to Nestle's and performance in the near future. But so far as we can see, um, that's, they're still well positioned to continue to deliver value. You know, I can't, I'm looking forward to uh, results from one of their competitors. It begins with C, C A D B U R O Y. They, now, they, they've, they've, with regard to the other players, it doesn't seem like they've been able to uh, carry out the same strategies that they have with respect to market penetration, brand loyalty, navigating logistic challenges. Well, you know, it's. Ma it's a big difference, it so seems. You also have to look at, for Nestle, you also have to look at the global portfolio of products that they have. So I mean, that helps. Yeah, so beyond just Nestle and Nigeria, if you look at Nestle Global, they have a wide array of products that, can, that they can always introduce compared to the other players in the market. Right. So there are still some products that are out there that have not been introduced. So if Nestle is going to introduce those products into the market, it's not going to take the same kind of um, capacity intensity. You know, like, you know, the, the, other, the other players will probably have to do. So, yes, they have a wide array of products that they can always introduce into the market to support, um, you know, top-line growth. Interesting. Now, let's get to stock market performance on Friday. Is bloodbath the right term? 2.2% eh? <laughs> drop. I think investors lost, what, about 308 billion naira. Only two gainers. I think it was Flower Mills and nice. Vitaphone. 41 losers, uh, what, six, co six companies on the loser side um, posted the maximum 10% uh, loss allowed. How did you see, how did you see things? With I was going to bring a balloon eh, that I'd blow out and pop it just to, <laughs> on, on set. But how, how, did you, how did you see things with regards to the market activity? 
I mean, it didn't come as a surprise because with the whole story about coronavirus, it was only a matter of time for us to see that significant hit in the Nigerian market. Um, of course, at the beginning of the week, um, you know, last week we saw some, you know, a lot of negative um, um, trading the equities market. But mm. Friday was a Friday big was one. Was a big one. Some people say that stock uh, investors they take out money on Friday so they can go and spend it on the weekend. But well, you know that coincides. The trading on Friday basically coincides with the um, announcement of um, a confirmed case of coronavirus mm. in Nigeria, and of course investors have to. Um, generally, we we'll take caution in, um, in that particular. So, that so is. is this mostly? Look, see, uh, Jerry. Malaria kills 300,000 Nigerians every year. Uh, in fact, the top four killers: tuberculosis, measles, HIV/AIDS, and malaria. HIV kills like 230,000. That's not making headlines. Is it possible that the market is? I asked this to Body or Shoshami earlier on. You think the markets are overreacting to the coronavirus because no one's. No one's been killed, right? It's only in, as far as the infection that we've noticed here in, 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 in Lagos, Nigeria. Do you think the markets are overreacting or is it, how do you see it? So basically what the coronavirus situation does is that it brings about a lot of uncertainty into the market. Mm. First and foremost, the typical investor will be worried about now there's coronavirus in Nigeria. Well, you know, a confirmed case in Nigeria. So what does that mean for, um, you know, global, for um, economic activities in Nigeria? Because as you all know, I mean, as you know, um, the equity market is tied to you know macroeconomic environment. Right. So if, like we saw in China, um, activities slow down. So if activities slow down in Nigeria, of course it has implications for the companies that operate in Nigeria. Right. And you want those guys to be in the market, of course they want to take caution. So that's how they're interpreting it. For, for, you know, if there is also going to be an escalation of the cases in Nigeria, there's been a general conversation as, as with regards to the weakness in terms of our health care compared, to, yeah, yes, compared yes, to, yes. to other countries. So there's a worry about you know. Given how contagious coronavirus is, if it's going to spread, and if it spreads massively, it's slowed down in activities, that's very negative for the market. And so, there's Jerry Mwebe of Cardinal Stone, thank you so much for joining us, giving us your thoughts on Nestle, MTN, coronavirus, the market activity. We we'll have to have you back. Thank you so much. So much to talk about.